to that body of Christ. Those of you joining us on our Facebook live stream, we're glad you're joining in as well. Part of the body of Christ. This morning's reading is frequently used in Advent as kind of a run-up, as a kind of a preparation into the Christmas season. Uh, instead, the, the narrative lectionary that we use situates it today, a few weeks after Christmas and a few weeks after Advent, because the narrative lectionary starts off with the birth narratives in the Gospels, the birth narratives of Christ, and moves through uh, the next couple of months until Easter, where we will be studying and talking about his crucifixion and resurrection. So that's kind of how the narrative uh, lectionary works. We'll be in the Gospel of Matthew for several more weeks. As we have been uh, working from Jesus' arrival on the planet uh, a couple of weeks back, this, this text is the transition from Jesus as a baby, as a child, and uh, not being in ministry, to Jesus being an adult and in his ministry. The Christmas season, starting in, oh, about mid-September, has a focus on Christ coming to us, God in Christ coming to us, that incarnation. It has that, that focus to it. And that's good and hopeful news to be certain. This reading moves us from thinking about the Christmas presents and Jesus being born to Jesus bringing the good news of God's kingdom to all the people for all time. With Jesus not doing his Jesus thing in the early part of his life, John has been the one who is baptizing people and letting them know someone as important is coming. I mean, think about that for a minute. We, we talk about Jesus a lot. It's funny how we do that. We talk about Jesus a lot. We talk about him being born. We make a big deal out of Christmas, and rightly so. And then nothing for a lot of his life years. Jesus is reckoned to have lived 33 years or so. And he's in ministry three of those. So roughly 8-9% of his life is actually in ministry. The rest of it we don't know a whole lot about. Other than that he was born and in Matthew's case tells us he went to Egypt. We don't know a whole lot about that. In that time period, it is people like John who are preaching a message of repentance. And letting people know that someone is important is coming. Someone that is important because that someone is bringing the kingdom of God near at hand. That kind of important. John has a reputation for being a serious, no nonsense, locust and honey eating, repent because Jesus is coming, you brood of vipers kind of serious dude. People take him seriously. Now here's a critical point and why Matthew situates this story right here. We've had the baby Jesus thing. That's all kind of fun. We celebrate like crazy. We know about that. We've had the escape to Jesus thing. That was last week we were talking about that horrible human being, thoroughly horrible human being in King Herod that uh, appalled us all through his actions in the slaughter of the innocents. With that kind of setup, now John is here, we hear John doing the repentance thing. And here's the transition, the transition that changes everything. We now shift to Jesus as an adult beginning his ministry, beginning his public ministry by doing the forgiveness thing. What is this repentance thing anyway? We generally think of repentance as I'm sorry and promising not to do something again. Fair enough. And that's not entirely wrong. That's not the whole story. It doesn't cover the entire meaning of the word. The ancient writers understood repentance as a kind of turning, as in turning away from evil and turning to God. Apologizing and trying not to do it again. Pretty good start apologizing, trying not to do it again, and turning our entire lives over to God, that's a better definition. Saying I'm sorry and promising not to do it again, easy or difficult? I mean, the saying you're sorry to the person who needs to hear you say it, and meaning what you say, promising not to do it again, easy or difficult? I think it varies a little bit. It's not really easy to ever do that. Unless you're our two and a half year old granddaughter with a five and a half year old sister. Then you say you're sorry and you don't really mean it. You keep doing whatever it was you were doing. Over and over again. We didn't see that at all this weekend when we were up in Sioux Falls. Not once. We didn't see that at all. <laughs> it's not easy, but difficult. Well, that can vary a little bit. Uh, 
saying we're sorry and not mean it, that, that can be hard. But saying we're sorry, promising not to do it again, and turning our lives over to God, compared to that, saying we're sorry is a piece of cake. While difficult, perhaps, both on a personal level and with God, repenting and repentance have at their very core the effect of changing our relationship with God. The more we can engage our repentance as going beyond saying that we're sorry and promising not to do it again and trusting God to transform us from the inside out, the more fundamentally we change our relationship with God. We go from focusing on ourselves to focusing on God and what God desires. Repentance takes us out of ourselves and brings us back to God. Which becomes our response to the forgiveness that Christ is bringing. And that is what turns the world on its head. The old way was to repent of your sins and be forgiven. And that's John's approach. That's what John is saying. Come to the river, repent of your sins and be baptized be forgiven. Now Jesus comes on the scene and he's bringing forgiveness. That's the transition that changes everything. You are forgiven. Now go repent which sounds exactly backwards from what we are used to. It sounds backwards to our ears and it did to a lot of folks in Jesus' day as well. We like to think of needing to repent first and we can be forgiven, but if we have learned nothing else in the Lutheran world, it is this, that we are saved by through our faith. Absolutely. And there are no works that we can do, including the work of repentance, that will earn that kind of forgiveness. It's not how the grace of God in Christ works. We're saved by grace through our faith and not by works, so having a requirement of repentance runs afoul of that. That doesn't mean we're free to continue sin, by the way. We're not free to continue sin, just don't. It's not a good idea. But we are saved by grace. Luther was pretty clear about both those things. What we can do is respond with gratitude. And part of that response of gratitude is repentance peace. We're not generally such huge fans of repentance. We do what we do. We usually like what we do. And we don't want to change what we do. Even on the occasion that we don't like. We do like the idea of other people needing to repent. We, we do like that. Other people need to repent. That part's okay. Those other people are in serious need of repentance. That newsflash, we are the other people. To believe otherwise is to highlight <laughs> the serious need of our repentance. So here's the fun part. We make repentance, we tend to make repentance this big, heavy, <coughs> weighty kind of thing. And that turns repentance into a chore, a duty. And there are a few of you who like your chores, most of us would rather not. And so repentance isn't all that great. It doesn't seem all that great to us. But think of it this way. There's a mindset that suggests it is a social faux pas to not say thank you for a gift or kindness that you've been given. Right? And we're in the middle of all this right now because we've had a bunch of Christmas gifts and some kindnesses and that sort of thing. And we're all writing our, Christ or our thank you cards, right? Some of you will have received mine. Some of you are waiting for me to buy more stamps. Sorry about that. We're supposed to say thank you when somebody does, you hold the door open for somebody. Say somebody, you know, if, if somebody holds the door open for you, you respond with thank you, right? And that's how we're supposed to do that. We're supposed to thank, say thank you when we receive a gift. Repentance is one of the ways that we say thank you. Repentance is one of the ways that we say thank you. Turning ourselves, turning ourselves toward God and the forgiveness that comes from God in Christ. You are forgiven. Now go repent. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Right, please stand as your comfortable name. Continue worshiping song. <laughs>